lighting is one of the most complex things in Unity, but the basic idea, let me make a cube just so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to make a cube and then I'll make a sphere just so there's something else for you all to see. There's something in the scene, the default scene has a, a light in it called a directional light. But let's say that I don't like that. I can delete this directional light by clicking, right clicking on it and then choosing delete. And then you'll see now, well, it's not gonna be totally black because there's another setting that we have to change also, but it's much dimmer now. So I can start adding other lights to my scene now if I want to. So I do it the same way that I add cubes and spheres. I right click in my hierarchy and then I go down here to this part of the menu and one of the menu options is light. So from this, I can choose directional light, point light, spotlight, area light, reflection probe, and light probe group. I am going to suggest that you guys ignore these last two for now because they're like more complex. Um, I think for now, point lights and spotlights uh, and directional lights, um, point lights and spotlights are going to be the most sort of atmospheric lights that you can use. So I'll make a point light, just so you can see what a point light looks like. And just like other objects, lights are going to have a transform. So I can position this light wherever I want in my scene. Uh, let me flip around so you can see it a little bit more from the player's perspective. And then if I have my light selected over here in the inspector, you can see that I have some settings. So I can change the range of this light to make it uh, like fill up more space or not fill up as much space. I can change the color of this light. So if I wanted it to be red, I can change it to red, for instance. I can change the intensity is how bright it is. And the intensity is different from the range, but that's mostly like a com computational thing. So I don't think you have to worry about that too much. I can decide if this light casts shadows or not. And this is where stuff gets a little bit technically complex because uh, let me hit play real quick. So you can see what this looks like from the player's perspective. So right now I have, oh, my mouse is just gonna keep doing this, it's fine. So right now I have hard shadows selected for specifically for that red light that I just made. So you can see that there are some shadows in my scene now created by that red light. But if I turn this off, then I'm not creating any shadows, which saves a lot of computational power actually. Um, and then if you guys want to know about the rest of this stuff, you can look it up. But this is all sort of more complex stuff. So that's sort of the basics of lighting. And then you can move your lights around however you want. Let me make a spotlight also, just so you can see what that looks like. And a spotlight works um, similarly to how you would think a spotlight works in real life. It's like a cone, basically. And you can see the cone. Um, and so by... Rotating this, I can change where the light's going, but then I may want to turn the range up and the intensity I can turn up or down. And maybe I wanna put my sphere over there so the spotlight is hitting something. And again, you can see because shadows aren't turned on for this spotlight, I'm not getting any shadow from this sphere. But if I turn on soft shadows, for instance, you can see that then I start to get shadows from my objects that the light is hitting. And lights are one of the most computationally expensive things. So you may get into a situation, I've had this happen to me before. Um, you may get into a situation where your computer decides that it wants to render some lights and not others. So you might get flashing lights in a way that you don't intend to, if you're not careful. But two lights isn't gonna cause a bunch of problems. <laughs>